Should we like call roll, please? Yes, Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Hillsdale. Here. Here. Not, we hope, quite present, but shortly to arrive. Uh, we're hoping for uh, Adam Abraham and uh, Chris Serbukin in for Susan Stiles, who did say that she would not be here also. Solicitor Chris Connor is already present. Denise Swinger's here as the planning and zone coordinator okay. for, the, for the village. Thank you. Okay, so we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, Chris, you're up here. Okay. You're on. on. I'm on. Well, let's do this. Okay, yeah. Adam, come around. Four seasons. Okay. Actually, let me take this in the camera. Okay. Pretty good. Thank you. Okay, so we have an agenda. Um, I know that, um, so we just talked briefly about rearranging this, putting the conditional use in front of the text amendments so that the folks that are here specifically for those items can, can bug out after they're finished if they choose. Any objections to that? Are you okay with that? Sounds good. Okay. Very good. Uh, next item is review of the minutes from the last meeting we had. Does uh, anyone have any comments on the first page? No. Page two. Page three. Page four. Uh, we have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Pretty good. Chris, you were upstairs. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Uh, next item is communications. I don't think we have any communications that don't pertain to anything on the agenda already. So the next item after that is council report. Do you have anything, uh, Jerry? Two items. Number one, uh, the uh, first we had the first reading on the changes for the signs, and, and number two we had a special meeting about uh, fiber optics. But right now, I don't think that's going to be that. That's what I have to see. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so the next item on our agenda would be the conditional use. Uh, first one is the conditional use application for mobile vending food trucks at uh, 305 North Walnut. Denise, you want to <coughs> kick off the discussion? Um, yeah, um, Yellow Springs Brewery um, had been <coughs> in the past completing special event forms monthly, and um, <coughs> that ended around the same time frame as council had approved food vendors, local food trucks in industrial one zone. Um, they, the, it was in June of 2013 they approved educational district uh, and institutions and then um, I-1. And for some reason, <coughs> uh, so I don't know if it was a staff thing, I, or really, I, there was no way to find that out. Um, Wise Brewery had been completing the special event forms monthly, and then that ended around that same time frame. I think they thought that they had gotten approval through this process. Perhaps they were attending some of these meetings, but actually a, an actual uh, meeting before planning commission of a conditional use hearing had never actually happened. So staff and Yale Street Brewery both had thought it had, but it had not. So they're here tonight to go through that formal process for their additional use for the trucks. Okay, so typically the way we do this is we hear from staff, then we uh, hear from the applicant, and then we have a open public hearing, uh, have discussion, and then we'll take whatever action we think is appropriate. So, do you want to go through some of these details? Uh, well, I mean, they, you know, they, they are, they want the mobile food truck during the times that their tavern is open. Their taproom hours have expanded. Uh, originally in the conditional use for the taproom, they were given uh, a rather extensive time frame that they could be open. And uh, currently 
They're going to be open on uh, Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, Saturday, 1 to 10, and Sunday, 1 to 8. Um, that's a total of 51 hours a week. They, they imagine that, um, and this will be going on from now, Memorial Day through Labor Day, and they imagine about 32 of those hours um, will the food trucks would be there. Um, they, they have uh, restrooms available in, inside. They have ample parking available. Um, the uh, food truck isn't taking away any uh, existing parking because they park in front of their uh, some like garage doors, large doors that they have there. And I mean, this works so far for them. Okay. And you recommend this recommendation is if you have no concerns and you recommend approval. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions for Denise? Okay. We want to hear from Lisa. Do you want to? Sure. My Absolutely. Identify yourself. And <laughs> okay. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, Denise is correct. We assumed that because we had already been um, using food trucks before the new zoning, that I guess we just assumed that everything was okay and um, we didn't have to go through this process. Obviously, we should have read the, the <laughs> fine details, but we did not. So I appreciate you doing this now. And it just came to our attention when Denise called me. And I looked at my files and realized oh, we didn't have anything in our files either. So um, I really don't have much to add to what Denise said. Um, our, we haven't had, I, as to my knowledge, we haven't had any complaints from neighbors or anyone about the food trucks. Um, other people, not just our customers, but locals come there. They watch our Facebook page to see which food truck is going to be there each day and they come and support it, and we know that because there are people in line, we, you know, when we walk outside, the people in line that we know are not coming in, you know, we generally know our customers, that, um, they're usually uh, frequent customers, but it's nice to see the locals out there getting the food as well, which helps support those vendors too. So, um, I can't really think of anything else to add. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions? So your, your conditional use request is to have one uh, food truck on site during the, the hours. Uh, yes. There might be a different vendor. Yes, we have about 15 different vendors that we schedule one per day. Um, that in our current lease with Millworks, that is what we're allowed to have is one per day. Um, there was one time and that, that we asked for to have an extra one and that was back in April of this year when we celebrated our 30th anniversary. We felt like we needed another and we did indeed and Millworks was happy to accommodate that and um, it really didn't cause any problems as far as we know, as far as parking or anything like that, everything seemed okay. So we don't intend to do that very often, or hopefully once a year. <laughs> yeah. um, you talked about your summer hours, um, or the yeah. winter hours. Um, so at Memorial Day, we added Monday and Tuesday because okay. obviously Yellow Springs is busier during the summer. There's a lot of people coming from out of town. so. Um, in past years, we've seen people coming to the door and, and you know, walking away disappointed on Monday and Tuesday because we're not open. So we decided to accommodate that. Um, and then come Labor Day, we will most likely go back and eliminate Monday and Tuesday because there's just it's just not that busy come that time of year. So that's our plan at this point. So of course, we would not have a food truck. It would only be back done for five days a week. Good. Do you have a lot of customers? <coughs> excuse me. That use the bike path and park in your bike rack. We do. You do? Yes, yeah, especially on weekends. You know, it gets real crowded. Um, but yeah, our bike, bike racks are often full. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Any other questions for Lisa? Thank you. So I have, I have one. And it, it has to do with the disposal of wastewater. Uh huh. Um, where do they be disposed of? The food trucks themselves? Yes. Or do they carry it out? I, as far as I know, they are carrying that out. I've never seen anybody dump anything or, yeah. Is there a place within your... There's, they certainly could, yes, absolutely, they could do that. I know that one food truck does fill their tank when they get there <laughs> from our faucet, but I've never seen anybody or even ask about dumping it. So I'm assuming they take it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. All right, thanks. Sure, thank you. Uh, any discussion before the public hearing? Okay. Anything else? No. All right, well, with that, uh, we'll open public hearing. Uh, if you have anything to address on this topic, please come forward and state your name and say your piece. Um, this is your opportunity. Don't everyone go at once. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, uh, if there's no, uh, no comments, then we'll close the public hearing. And any further discussion? I have a question for you, Denise. Is this something, do we need to limit this to one? One? The one? One, one unit, yes. Is there you can, it can be a condition that you can is, is there a negative to not limiting it to one? Well, it would be if they end up having to take parking spaces away from, um, I mean, they could, you know, just but wouldn't, wouldn't that be up to the owner there? You know, yeah, if they're only doing yeah. it once a year. No, I mean, if, you know, yeah. if they know what. The mill works owners. Yeah, they know what to yeah, I mean, if Melworks would allow them to in the future, is there any reason why we wouldn't allow them to as long as the parking requirements were fulfilled? I mean, like, we could make a condition that, you know, like they, that it, I mean, that's already con yeah, a it's condition. Already a condition. It's already a condition right. that, you know, parking is not impacted in a way that the businesses don't have enough parking legally, right? Right. So, I don't yeah, see any yeah, reason to the issue of the trucks itself was already um, d debated at the council level before, so. Right. You, you might. <coughs> The, I mean, the only thing that I can think of is if then you got a request from another business located in the works for themselves to be able to bring a food truck, and you, it would make more sense, I would think, to uh, look at a condition for the works as a whole to have an upper limit of X, and then not have to, for you folks, not have to, have to sort between which business gets what. That would be my only thought. But unfortunately, that's not the application that's before us. Right, right. Yeah. And in the ordinance, it says something trucks about um, see. about yearly. I, I, I the zoning minister is supposed to check out yearly and see oh, yeah. how that's going. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it requires that they come before the planning commission again. No, they wouldn't. Okay, it's your job, right? Yeah. So. closest to it 
Yeah, they actually, those yellow um, places there, or the, sorry, the green, indicate all the places that they are allowed to have parking. Okay. Well, and there's another piece here too, which is the planning commission looks at things from the macro big picture. If there's a, an immediate issue, that's a landlord problem to deal with as well. Okay. And there's already some lease restrictions that apparently exist with the various tenants, I would presume. So, planning commission is a tool. There's an annual review. I think that you've got your checks and balances in places to protect the, the, the various interests that may be there. Okay. okay. Thanks, Chris. Anything else? If there's not, do we have a motion? I move to approve the conditional use. Second. Take a vote. I'm sorry, who's the second? Okay, Jerry. Yes. Also. Okay. I'm sorry. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're oh, all you're taking a roll call. Yes. Yes. Paul's up? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. Okay, next item is the site plan review for the building expansion at 888 Dayton Street. So we had some material and then there's some additional material here today. And I had a chance to look at all of it.
So I followed the PUD regulations for what uh, the setbacks need to be on this building. Uh, in your drawing, um, the setback for the side yards looks as though it's right up against the property line, but that is an error. It's actually 18 feet back from that. And uh, if, if you are familiar with the site, uh, there should be a picture. So here, yeah, that. Yeah, that's right there is actually 18 feet away from the property line. So is and that so said anywhere? I said in my report, but okay. they're going to they're going to talk about that tonight. And what's the required setback? Uh, 25 feet on total both sides with uh, 10 uh, as the minimum on one side. And they are fine on the other side, so they're fine on this side as well. Um, this, uh, will, this building will go to, up to the, there's a tree line there. It will not affect the tree line. So there won't be any removal of any trees in order to put this building up. So I, in my evaluation of it, I also met with um, the village manager and the superintendent of water and electric. Um, I think uh, they had really no issues with the sewer water. They said that would connect to the existing what's already there. Um, electric, uh, he, uh, Johnny Burns does need to see an electric plan. Um, he uh, talked a couple weeks ago with um, DMS's uh, electric person that works for them, and he was going to get him something. It has to, because John, Johnny said that it's going to require a transformer. This is all on DMS. And a line that has to come off of Bacon Street that will go to the back of the property where this building will be. Um, my my concern is stormwater management that um, and they are going and although that's not in the in my report, I believe they have updated information for you tonight. Okay. And of course, I, we should hear a little bit about the building itself, the materials, and making sure that it's architecturally integrated with what's already there. Okay. So it sounds like from your report, from what you're saying, is that there's still some things missing that you would like that, to see. That they might have tonight. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions for Denise right now? <coughs> Yeah, I have one. Has um, any discussion with the neighbor as to the uh, closeness to the property line being a problem? The it, it's not going to be a closer than the existing buildings are now. And this neighbor here. Yeah. That they own. They own that. They own the township. No, to the east. She's talking about this property. Where the the loading uh, dock is, mm -hmm. or the the driveway for the loading dock. That neighbor. You well, said that was going to be eight, 18 feet from the property line? No, no, no they're 18 feet from this property line right here. And this property line uh, is, this is a separate lot. Okay. Yeah, owned by sorry. Sorry. Okay. Never mind. Um, I have a question. Maybe it's a question for them. Um, is the uh, dimensions of the addition like would it be bigger if there wasn't that property line there or is this the like full extent yeah in fact we just had to come up and yeah. just identify ourselves uh, ken soward uh executive vice, vice president of dayton Animal services um this plan is the um final well not the final plan but it's it's what we've been planning with the board and um, from the get-go when we moved in this is an addition that's going to be added on to the existing building, which is going to mirror the same architectural draw architectural structure as the one that's there, except we added to to try and spruce it up a little bit, we added windows to it where the existing building does not. So it looks a little more pleasing than the uh, the where just a warehouse. Um, the, 
as far as the neighbor towards the one side, um, it doesn't get any closer to their residence than what our building is now. To the north is, um, I believe it's like almost four acres that we own. And in your question, that would be if we planned on adding more or changing the structure, it wouldn't be now. That would be something in front of the board later. And we would end up having, from what I've had conversations, annexing that land into the village. It is township mm -hmm. land now. Okay. So, so that's why you can't just come so as far, Right. As far as the setback, it's 10 feet because it's that's the land. Yeah. I guess there's regulations that you can't cross over boundaries of the township village. So the only way we could do that, from my understanding, is to annex that into the village. Is that correct? Oh, well, our setbacks, you mean, for those are our building setbacks. But, but even if it was a village, it, even that if line, it was a village to be yeah. eliminated, regardless of the township line, the lot line, Correct. you can't, yeah, you can't well, cross a lot line. Okay. Right. But we, those are two separate lots that we have to do yeah. some legal maneuvering to uh, get those in. And, and in our discussions, we talked about the fact that because it is two separate lots and you can't cross over without combining, that route was going to mean they're going to have to, if they were used up, they're going to have to annex. Yeah, because you can't combine a township lot with the Yellow Springs lot without annexing. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then on the uh, east, or the west side, I believe, is the parking lot, and that will not be affected. The parking spaces will stay the same. Um, the, and it will connect to the other building on the south side um, it's like i said it's going to mirror what we have there now except for the windows as you see on this problem here i have a question the, the building that it's going to be next to how tall is that it is 30 feet tall so the front of this building will will match that existing building but then it goes down it slopes, it slopes down after that um, my operations manager, Tom Cooper, he can, uh, he's been doing most of the work for me since I was out of town when we got phone calls, so <laughs> I'll let him take over as far as the other questions that Denise had. Okay. Yeah, I think the two concerns that uh, we, we were hoping to shed some light on tonight is um, the water runoff question. Um, I've given you a document that has some green circles that kind of makes reference to the modified plan that the architect will, we're in like a step two of this final drawing and we expect to have that. Once we get past this um, step, they will finalize all the drawings and we will get them back to you. But the structure itself is not changing. It would only be the engineering uh, of the layout structure with a water runoff and the electrical uh, portion of the building uh, that is uh, still because of the additional steps we want to make sure that we were working with the village and so we did make contact with Johnny and we have we've got a plan together so we will propose to give that electrical uh, portion of the building to feed the main power to the building uh, which essentially is essentially we're going to put a booster another pole down into our parking lot halfway down the lot and feed the, the second edition with uh it would be all at, at dms's expense and all of the lines into the building are adequate according to you guys as engineering uh, didn't seem to be a problem it's just proposing it documenting it and and letting you know what the end result would be with that the uh, water runoff with regards to, there are some retention, there's one retention pond that it never really fills up, that's on the side of the Dayton Street side, which is the first green one. That is for the present structure. So essentially any water runoff that comes off of the building, it goes in there and it goes into the storm sewer. That is the, the blue indicator there. There are two storm sewers on our property, one in the rear, one in the front. Um, so. What will happen is when we build onto the expansion, none of the parking lot, the only 
water runoff that we have to contain is the present structure that we're building and where the water was running off the driveway through the grass, through the field, out into the back field, which they probably need they own. So what we need to do is redirect that coming off of the blacktop driveway to go off into the field so it doesn't go off into the back of the loading dock. So that's really what that green line indicates is a natural, not a storm sewer, just a natural concaved in the in the uh, in the earth <laughs> to get it off of the driveway. So there won't be any tie-ins from the building into the to the to the sewer or at all. So it will be natural runoff. So where's the rainfall? It's, it's the roof. Where's it going? Here? It's going off into the storm sewer, which is the one that's in the back of the lot. Okay, so it's going. To the it's going to the storm sewer. Okay. But the actual parking lot runoff, nothing. So we go north. Which is what it's doing now to the east. north and well, north. It was going kind of east, but I guess it's now. Yeah, it's north north. angled northeast. Okay, because the building where it was is going to be now. There's going to be a building there now. Yeah, it was for that, right? Yeah. So that's the plan. It will be documented. It will be written up in a formal uh, plan that will explain exactly what that size of the tie-in for the back present building will be, but it will be to your code and essentially, you know, the, I believe that it was a six inch pipe that they're trying to connect into. So uh, that is that is what the proposed plan is right now for the water retention slash uh, runoff. Okay. In my report, I, 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 I talked with um, uh, the superintendent of the wastewater collection and he had told me that um, everything uh, from the existing buildings tie in underground and go to the catch basin off of Dayton Street, which you're saying. What I what he didn't realize, I don't think, and I didn't know, which I put in my report, is that there actually is a retention basin. You just don't even notice it because of because it doesn't get like tall grasses and used. Well, what well, water goes to the uh, that basin? All the runoff from or the uh, south end of the building. Okay, so that does not go in the storm sewer. So yes, it does. It does. It, it, what happens is it goes into the, the this retention bond, and it doesn't go into the ground. It goes, it goes up seven inches, I think, and then it, it goes into the, the it goes yeah, into it, the, the pipe that it runs off is about that far from the bottom yeah. of the retention pond. So that has to fill up before it runs into the sewer. And, it, and we've been there since January, and it hasn't. I haven't seen it. I actually wanted to make it a, a pond like they have across the street. Yeah. It doesn't get. It doesn't look like it gets enough to, to worry about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions for these guys? Now, reading the documentation preparation of the meeting, that was the, the only note that I had was the stormwater. Otherwise, everything looks straightforward. I like the fact that you put them in windows. I think yeah. that's delightful for your employees. Yes, it is. And as far as the use, I think somebody had a question on the use. It's going to be the same use as the building that's there. Um, it's going to be production, and there'll be um, like letter inserting machines or addressing machines in there. Um, not huge production machines. It's probably okay. about the size of your. So we have this checklist. Yes. Have you guys, do you guys have this? Yes, I do. There's a bunch of stuff on here you guys haven't done. Correct. Uh, uh, well, let, let me some say of it's it. not relevant, but some of it is. Right. So what we did is we, we have hired, we have an architect that's working out of Pittsburgh. So he is charged with completing that. Okay. And, um, it, it will be done. <laughs> and most of it is done. It's just not documented on, on your side. And that, because we were kind of working toward a different timeline, and so it kind of got sped up for us. So I guess if, if, if there are highlighted <coughs> bullet points that I'm unaware of, to the most of these have been addressed in yeah. other conversations and other. Um, so we want to make sure that we will, we absolutely will complete that. 
Well, it's not meant to be onerous, but it's, a, it's meant to give Denise the information in a, in a package that she can actually go through. Yeah, like yeah, one this sort just, of like one or you know five pages that we right, have on right. hand. Right. And so the big thing I think I'm, I see is the electrical is still outstanding. Um, is there any, there's no discussion of fire protection, I don't think. We are doing fire protection in the building. It is an outstanding item. It okay. is on your agenda. And if you guys talk to the chief and if you're coordinating that through. We've not talked to the chief. We did talk to the, uh, the present inspectors of the building. We have a plan now for the site. Uh, we've actually got it inspected. There is no upgrades to the facility. So no need for another fire hydrants? No. That kind of thing? No, we have okay. a pump that's uh, adequate enough to cover the new building. Okay. So the, the, the only really thing in the fire plan that came up that will be designed is where the sprinkler systems will be running uh, and, and, and adjacent to hooking into the present structure. So it wasn't like a full-fledged fire plan. It will be a fire plan, but it won't be any yeah. modification to the main pumps. Right. From from the from the talking of, of not only the architect but the builder, it's pretty. It, it, it would it, it may not come across right, but it's it's a pretty straightforward building. It's yeah. not really uh, complex. Right. Because we're not really doing a whole lot of in design on the inside, so it's it's going to be pretty open. It's an open plan. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and regardless, I mean, it's yep. still talks about the you know, stamp. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming that's Ohio PD. Um, What's that again? Uh, uh, it's probably Ohio PD or Ohio Architect, I assume. Oh, no, no, no. We, we definitely yeah, have a. Professional. Prepares professionals. Yes. We will have a. Professional. Yeah. We have contracted them, and they are in the contract. They're actually the ones that prepared the documents, but because it's not completed, they didn't want to yeah. stamp it, or, and that's why that's why you don't have a stamp document, but you will receive within a week, we will have the prepared documents. Okay, and that also has to go through approval through the county. Yeah. Yeah, right. With the well, electrical the and foundation and all that stuff. Right. 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 Are there any floor drains? There are one. One in the main main facility of the kitchen area, let's call it that. Okay. After lunch area. Is that connected to the sanitary or the it will be. Okay. Yeah. The um the long or the one I have is this this one right here. Yes. And I show it looks like a, a door entrance. Overhead door. Over, is, it, is this an overhead door? There are no overhead doors. Oh, so is this exactly? Is so that is a main pedestrian uh, entrance. Oh, okay. For glass entrance. Yes. Okay. That would be a double glass door. No. Now what is this one? That's that just be? like a fire exit. Yeah, that's a 36 inch okay. steel steel door. Okay. Now is there any other exits along this line? These are windows. Yeah, I can see no, the windows. No, no, uh, no exit doors. Mm -hmm. On this side of the room, there will be two on the back side. Yeah, and this feeds into the other building. So no, no. this is actually yeah. this, this is terrible. Yeah, and there okay. will be on the side. I'll just put it up. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just more concerned concern about. Yes. Yeah, so on the yeah. back side of the building, there's a door, 36 inch door, and there is a, a large door on the back side of this. And, it, and there will be also a door off of the kitchen area. Okay. okay. Or the left. So this drawing we show this this door here. That is, is correct. Right. That is correct. That's that is correct. It's just the wrong dynamic. It's a glass entry. Yeah, it looks just like the overhead door on the back. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was confused about. So that is the main entrance. That is going to be the main entrance of the glass entry. Door. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That's part of this phase that we're in with the why it's not stamped is because we have some modifications that have to be yeah. done. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for these guys? So what is the recommendation from staff that we do at this point? Well, that's the next item. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we still need to have a public hearing also. So let's do that. And then we'll come back to Denise with questions and um, and go on from there. Okay, so at this time, um, 
We'll open the public hearing. If anyone has any comments on this matter, please step forward, identify yourself, and uh, say, have your say. If there's no one, uh, no comments, then we'll close the public hearing. And we will come back to our discussion. Um, Denise, how is your feeling on this as it stands? Well, I just suggested that maybe we go through these really okay. quickly and see okay, which we did that as well. Which, um, which under review standards, we call 6806. <coughs> Essentially, we've got four sections that have never had cars parked at. 
So, and you probably won't. I believe that the total was 169. You could take a couple. So it's 185. It, yeah. Okay. Counting the back, it's different. Ones. And then we, we also, yeah. as you know, we added the doctor parking lot on the back, which has accommodated Dr. Brown back. So his, his patients are not parking out front anymore um, in that area that's uh, 85. Do you have much consumer or walk-in? No. Most of our parking is employees. Um, the only other walk-in that we have is the Dr. Yellow Springs uh, primary care. And they, we have accommodated them um, with the first two rows of parking. Um, and then we're going to take the far north parking when the building is done. So our employees are parked far north where nobody parks now. I mean, there it's like three, four rows of empty slot right now. And most of our employees are there already. Yeah, I've been by there during the day. There's lots of room for sure. And we don't anticipate, you know, that changing a whole lot um, unless we hire. We hire a bunch more people, then we'll end up building a lot on the, in the township side, I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, to be exact, um, and I put this into my report, um, the uh, Dayton Street side added 11 more spaces. There were already 192 spaces, uh, bringing the total to 203. With the expansion, uh, which is increasing the square footage, with what's existing and the 26,600 square foot building increases the square footage to 119,582, which computes to 217 spaces. So it's 14 short, but as I just said, um, what they just mentioned and the fact that their, their employees are split up over several shifts, um, they still have spaces that are not even being used. As far as off-street loading, um, because of the size now, that it required six spaces, and they have how, how many exactly on a, a docks? Where, where I mean, the area I measured the area, and it definitely can have six, even more than that, of trucks that can there, offload. There's, there's six docks, but two of those docks are, are compactors, um, cardboard and paper, okay. so those will never be used as trucks. But, yeah, so you have so about four yeah. plus a drive up. Okay. Okay. So that's that. So next to store water. Store water, which we already um, talked about. Yeah, so are you, based on what they've described to you, are you okay with the store water as, as is? Yeah. Like I said, I've never been through this process before, but um, if I want to, I, I, we need to have a plan. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, as a condition of the approval, I think that if we, as long as I think that if I have a plan, then I can have also have other staff people review it as well. We should be fine. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys need to develop a site plan that includes some of the utilities. Yeah. It's it's in it's in the yeah. works. It just okay. can be brought for this meeting. Okay. Next time is landscaping. Landscaping. Um, landscaping shall be preserved as natural state as far as practical. Yeah, they, they, there is nothing really in that area but grass right now. Um, the existing landscaping that they have is not going to be damaged, and the tree line is not going to be damaged. So I didn't really have any issues with that. That's screaming. I don't. Well, are you going to maintain the as it is, um, yeah. Hopefully, okay. better than we're trying to get rid of some of the landscaping that's there. The uh, the old uh, prairie grass type stuff, and replace that with trees and and uh, grass. Uh, lighting. Lighting will be maintained the same as the present facility. We'll have four corner lighting on all sides of the building, just like we. Okay. Can I recall you run multiple shifts? We do two. 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 
they don't they leave uh, what's the limit? generally it's around right now the schedule is around eight or nine they leave we have people there maybe up until about nine o'clock um, but that can fluctuate into 12, 12 or 11 o'clock at night it's some depending on our, our production environment it can move as late as 12 o'clock and, and is the entire employee area lit or just a designated area for those the whole parking lot has uh, lighting parking lot lights and then there's structure lights outside and it do, do those lights remain all through the dark period yes. even though 24 hours a day 24 okay. hours okay uh, all, all all of them nighttime hours they're on a, a sensor or outside a utility service all utility service should be on the ground almost impractical it's and and uh Johnny Burns says it's impractical yeah, so that, that is part of our, I'm sorry, that is part of the bigger, that's part of this main plan that we're bringing forward, that it would be, it would have to be an overhead um, feed into the main facility. Okay. Item seven is exterior uses, exposed storage, machinery, cooling, and heating units. And I did ask about that, and I think, did you have any? So basically, that's, well, I will, we were going to provide a uh, floor plan of the building, basically telling the utilization of the equipment placement and what it is, is its present structure. In other words, where our where equipment would be. So we're, well, we're more concerned about exterior yeah, yeah. exposed AC, exterior. Oh, uh, all of the, the exterior air units will be on the road. Okay. They're actually on the road. Okay. Not sitting on the ground. And that will be in the electrical plan for the, for the uh, heating and air. Okay. Item eight is emergency access. That's the fire department um, accessibility. And you're not really changing anything that's there. That's not changing at all. Yeah. Water and sewer installation shall comply with the village specifications and requirements. We've talked about that. And then the last one is signs. And you're not changing your signs, right? Yeah, the signage will be what we presented last to Denise and Brad. And the board and the BCA, yeah. That's good because we don't want to talk to <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So with regards to the checklist, that's why we were hope that's what we were hoping to bring coming forward and giving you the knowledge of the two open ended ones. That's what our yeah. design was. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, any more questions for Denise? I guess the big question in my mind is, is, is there enough information for, here for us to approve this with conditions, or do we want to wait and see these other documents before we do that? Well, I think Denise and Jeremy and the rest of the village group, they know what they have to conclude. They have but the experts. but do we have that authority to approve this without? Well, with conditions? Yeah, I believe the, the, the whole problem was um, the timing, and um, we would be satisfied with a uh, proposal that conditions on the, that the electric follows what the village would require. And in talking with Johnny um, Burns, um, it was just, they were talking about which way would be best to run it, and that's where we're at. Um, he had a different um, opinion than what we were going to plan on doing, and actually his is a better one than exactly. what we were doing. Um, we were going to run it underground, which would have been you know, a, a huge cost to us, and he, he believes it would be better and beneficial to run it towards the back of the building than tie it into what's in there now. We could have tied it in with the building and, and run it lengthwise through it, but his plan seems much better. That's why that had to be changed and, and you don't have that. And we'd be willing to accept that as a, a condition. And then the water runoff, um, it's either, a, I believe, several different directions we could go. Um, if, if the approval of uh, your person, your supervisor, that um, checks that, it doesn't match his 
then we'd be willing to adjust to to what he wants. Or we just need to. We're trying to get the process moving yeah. because there is a timeline. Yeah. We are about three months behind schedule as it is. With uh, do, you, do you see an issue, Chris? Well, well, no, I don't. I, I think that, that when you look at, um, and I would direct your attention to. 126804, which is the application or review, and it's section small b three and four. Um, the four says the planning commission shall consider the site plan, shall either approve the site plan as submitted if all applicable requirements and standards have been met. Um, you know, it, it doesn't require rigid uh, meeting every not be on across the T. I I think that the oral representations that have been made are adequate or could be determined by your body to be adequate to um, say, okay, get it done the way you've represented and we'll give you conditional approval. That way you have some comfort that you can go forward um, and there's not going to be the carpet taken out from under your feet. Um, so you just have to define what those conditions are that you think would comply with that, that final piece of the, the site plan. In, in his his opinion there, um, what we need is a s substantial financial investment to move forward from here uh, and get this approval. So what we're looking for is approval to move forward. And to do, without this approval, we're not going to financially put our money on the sure. table to, to move forward. That's what we so, so what are those pieces that that, that, that you've said, okay, one, that the electric's going to be done in the manner consistent with the village? Utility connections. Okay, utility yeah. connections. Yes. Yeah. Storm water management. Storm water. You've seen drawings on the storm water, water is going to be addressed, so arguably that condition would have been met with that requirement. Now, if you want more detail on that, you certainly could say you'd like to see more. Um, as soon as those drawings are provided to us, we'll provide them to do these. Do we need to see them or is that that? Yes, I, mean, I, I think, think we can, we can delegate yeah, that to back to Denise. Yeah. Once, it's, it's, once it's approved by planning yeah. commission, then yeah. the zoning administrator yeah. becomes the liaison. Yeah, I think project. my main issue is, you know, the things that, you know, the building department is going to get, right, like, we should have on, the things that we require, we should have on file. Planning commission that doesn't necessarily need to see them, but they, they should be in the office of, Part of your application and, and we yeah. agree. Um, yeah. But to move forward yeah. with that, yeah. I um, agree. We need I it we to put the. I think we can do that today. And ultimately, what will happen is when you submit the final documents according to our code, then the zoning administrator will sign off on those, and then we've got something on record. Then you've got on record what the expectation is. But yeah. again, the planning commission can adopt. Yeah. What What's happened today? Yeah, but certainly there's nobody here objecting to what you want to do, which is a relevant factor as well. Yeah, so, okay, so all that being said, then how do we wordsmith a, a resolution that identifies what we see as those, uh, uh, conditions. those conditions? I was thinking, we do something similar to what we did with the uh, Herman vacation with as long I mean, having like Jason go out with Reggie and, you know, as long as he signed off on it, I mean, we were okay with that. We do the same thing with Jason and Johnny in the situation, we have the conditions that the staff approves, you know, the relevant centers approve of the yeah. you know, changes that we're worried about. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think we just meant like Denise, yeah. you know, made yeah. that point and, uh, and then she can delegate with those guys as yeah. she sees fit. And then if, if we have any issues, we can come back before this board. You know, one of the things you could do is, is by way of motion to move forward. If you look at subsection three, it says, once the zoning administrator determines the site plan is complete, um, the site plan shall be transmitted to the planning commission for consideration at its next meeting. Um, I think that, that this body can say, that you've reviewed the site plan, that you want pieces of additional information that can be approved by the zoning administrator without having to come back to this body. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I agree with that. I just, um, 
which needs a like hammer out some language that we're all not about. What, what are the areas yeah. that you were wanting further information on? I've got uh, the electrical plan, the stormwater runoff plan. Is there? I don't know into that. Yes. Yeah, I think that's it. I agree. Okay, so Denise just scratched out some things here. Um, and the one, which is a pretty simple one, is that level B checklist requirements. Yeah. Okay, that's that defines a lot of these things. Um, uh, the second one is utilities plan. So that's the electrical. Uh, third one is the stormwater management. Uh, fire suppression. So do we need a uh, but all these Some things kind of are, are, these are all part, part of the checklist, right? I think we just, you know, yeah, talk about the checklist. the checklist. And then the last one is uh, to approve the parking assets, since we're deficient on the spaces. Yes. Y'all agree. Okay. Yep. So that says that, that we can approve it with the conditions that the level B checklist requirements are met to Denise's satisfaction, and that the parking spaces of 14 spaces. 14 the deficiency of 14 spaces is is agreeable. Yeah, that the, the existing parking is sufficient. Yeah. To the use. That's the 14 spaces. So moved. Yes. <laughs> 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 Draft scratches for us. Read can... back something. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you said. Okay, so you're um, approving with the conditions that the level B checklist is completed to the satisfaction of the zoning administrator, and approving the parking as it currently exists. Correct. Um, it, approving the parking as it currently exists as adequate to the proposed use. Exactly. I moved. You did. Call second. Call second. Okay. Call roll. Abraham. Uh, yes. Sir Bukin. Yes. Calls out. Yes. Sims. Yes. Three. Yes. Okay. Hey. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Yes. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. A little at a time. <laughs> okay. The last items are the text amendments, public hearings on the text amendments. So again, we have to go through this process. Um, and I guess we should go through them one at a time. Uh, these are the text amendments that we've been talking about off and on. Uh, cleaning up some things. And Denise, do you want to start with text amendment? Linda? In chapter 1240.03, in the table, it gives lot and width requirements for residential di districts, um, but it erroneously lists in um, residential B a density of up to 14 units per acre. And if you look at chapter 1240.01, which I've attached an attachment to these text amendments so that you can see it very clearly. 124801, it describes under res, uh, residential B, development of densities up to eight units per acre. For some reason, it was just like a typographical thing. In multifamily dwellings are permitted a density of up to um, 14 units per acre. But it should be eight units. And I, I know this because in working with um, how many got a lot that's in RC, that is 14. 14. Yes, RC. RC is a lot of 14. Yeah. So that's probably what happens. I cut and paste, probably. Yes. So do we need a motion that says uh, we, we approve uh, changing the wording from 14 units? Yeah, first units. we need to have our public hearing, though. Uh, by us. 
So do you want to go so, item by item? Yeah, we'll go item by item. Okay. And um, that way we will all be on record on each of those changes. Because that needs to go back to council. Right. For two readings. Two readings. Okay. Okay, so um, this is a public hearing to modify the language in Chapter 124003. Uh, to make a correction from 14 units per acre to 8 units per acre. Uh, open the public hearing. If anyone has any comment on this, if not, we'll close the public hearing and consider a motion to accept this change. I'm Second. So moved. Second. Judy, you want to call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sir Buchan? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Hold up. Yeah. Okay. In chapter um, 125801 at the table uh, in the schedule of uses by district, it lists mobile vending food trucks that are allowed in um, B1. I'm sorry. B1, I1, and I2 but it was missing from EI. And so we need to add that in there. And I put below that the documentation showing from July 10th of 2013 where council approved it in EI. And that's the kid that the educational. The educational, yes. Okay. <coughs> okay, um, if there's no questions for Denise, we'll open the public hearing. If anyone has any comments on the change to 125801, mobile bending food trucks uh, being included in the Educational Institution Zone District? Uh, if there's no comments, we'll close the public hearing and consider a motion. So moved. Uh, do you want me to move that we approve the change to 125801? That's fine. Okay. Second. Okay. Abraham. Yes. Sibukin? Yes. Ozel? Yes. Sims? Yes. Yes. Okay, third one. In Chapter 126208D1, Conditional Use Requirements, it um, lists mobile food vending trucks as a conditional use, but it's missing from the Industrial District I1 Zoning District. As, and then also within that, 126208D1, it shows educational institutions as E1, and there is no E1 or E2. It's EI, educational stage institutions. Mm -hmm. So those two things needed the, the uh, do we need separate hearings on them? Well, I don't, I don't it's, it's both in chapter 126208D1. So I, did, I didn't split them up. I don't think they need to be split up. It's okay. uh, A, number A, food trucks may be permitted to operate within the B1, EI, I1, and I2 zoning districts. Okay, any questions for Denise? Uh, over a public hearing, anyone has any comments or questions about this modification to Chapter 126208 D1? Uh, if not, we'll close the public hearing. We have a motion to accept these changes. I move to accept the changes. Second. Judy? Yes. Zagugan? Yes. Pazel? Yes. Sims? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay, then number four. And finally, um, the Title IV zoning appendix, zoning map, again, it lists the educational institution as E1 instead of EI, which means correction. Any questions for Denise? Uh, now we'll open a public hearing and then close it. Um, <laughs> is, that, is, there, is there anywhere else just curious where E1 is referenced? Oh, look, in the council minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't care about that. <laughs> I don't care about the zoning code. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> We have a motion to uh, accept the changes to the move. Second. Second. Okay. But in answer to your question, oh. I did look everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere else in that zoning code, it is not. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
that's how I found the map. <laughs> At the very end. Okay, is there Yes. 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 I think that is the last item on our agenda. I just wanted to mention um, for the next meeting, uh, we may be having the uh, Glass Farm Solar Array coming up. I believe um, company AEP or something. Is that right? Is uh, AEP. Yeah, AEP. But they have not submitted anything yet. So, yeah. But I just was just being told that that might be coming up. And, and the Mexican restaurant, is that coming up? But what happened with that? I, mean, I, I thought that I got pushed back off this agenda. Are you working with them privately for us? Well, I would, was, yeah, I was with, working with him, but he needed to have a you know, drawing showing the, what we had discussed as far as the increase of the six spaces or more mm -hmm. spaces. And um, I, he, had, he had drawn a, a floor plan of the um, outdoor patio, but I wanted to see something from a side view. So because it's against the parking lot that shows a barrier, um, and he has had difficulty securing an architect um, and ha hasn't been submitted that yet. So I, I'm hoping that he will. But he did he did get um, discouraged because one of the architects said to him, uh, oh, this is some Columbus or somewhere that, that if they if they require 12, they're not going to give you anything less than 12. And I said, well, that was the whole reason we went, <laughs> we went and had this discussion earlier, you know? Yeah, exactly. they, 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 they were, <laughs> were saying they were, no. he wasn't here for our discussion. But you, you talked to them since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them that, you know, I, I called them right the next day and told them, hey, they were pretty okay with that. Well, so I said, well, that's just, that's erroneous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, I'm hoping that he will. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing, well, there's one other um, issue that I'm talking with legal about now. Uh, there could possibly be, or we have to look into it a little bit more. Um, there's a, it's a variance, but it's in a PUD. And a variance in a PUD might have to go before planning rather than PCA according to the new zoning code, or may not be allowed to happen at all. I'm not really sure. And then um, lastly, uh, Ted Dinell had given me a uh, pocket neighborhood community development zoning ordinance and wanted um, if planning wondered if planning commission could take a look at it and see if it might be something that could be incorporated into our zoning. Okay. So we will the next meeting. Yeah. If it doesn't do get too crazy. Is that something for us? Yes, I can forward this to you. And that's it. <coughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Guys, yeah, Thanks, everyone.